thank you everyone for uh, coming. This is my blessing. Uh, I just want to say very briefly here, we're going to be showing a lot of information. It's going to be coming very, very quickly to you. So don't bother writing any notes because we're going to either give you the book, hand out the book, or we're going to give you the uh, the CDs that I have of the last Chronicles of Planet Earth. You'll be able to put those right on your computer. Uh, I'd rather have you listen to what is being said because you can all always go back. Everything just about I'm going to ninety ninety percent uh, is going to be in the book, so that you'll have uh, the ability to take your time and to read it and digest all the information because it's going to be coming at you pretty fast. So also, when you go to my website, www.bibleprophecyman.com, you're going to see my book there, as you see right here on that screen back there, that uh, once you get there, just scroll down, you'll see that link, click the link, and you'll have the book immediately, and it's free. The Lord told me never to charge anybody, and never have, never will. And uh, so you don't have to worry about me ever emailing you, asking you for anything. That's between you and God. So with that, just let me say that, uh, let me do a quick check here to make sure everything is working right. That's working good. Okay, so uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, very important, and it says this, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you. So we're going to have an, this anointing. Who are they talking about? Jesus anoints us. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. In other words, Jesus Christ abides in us. He is anointed us. He is the one who teaches us. So if you were stranded on an island by yourself, God would instruct you, and if anyone tells you that you can't know the Bible or what it says, for example, the Jehovah's Witnesses who say that only the Watchtower prophets can tell you what it means and how you study the Bible, just show them 1 John 2, 27 and tell them you're lying because that's not what the Bible says. So let's go to Daniel. Daniel 2, 21, it says this, God changes the times and the seasons. He moves kings and sets up kingdoms, or kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. You know, it's interesting, in Daniel 2.21 it says, and God changes the times and the seasons, because Paul the Apostle wrote, of the times and the seasons, brothers, I don't need to write to you because you'll know. So, what does that mean? Well, we see the times and the seasons, the end times, what's developing, all of the signs that the Lord told us to look for. We see those. Those are the times and the seasons. You'll see in, the, in Genesis, he appoints the, the, uh, the sun and the moon, and we have seasons throughout the year. And so God's got a calendar. It's not our calendar. It's God's calendar. And on those days, he has certain things that are going to be taking place. He tells us about that in Isaiah, because in Isaiah, he tells us that he is going to tell us the things that haven't taken place yet. So when they come to pass, you're going to know. You're going to know. And Jesus told us, when you shall see all of these things, you'll know that it's near, even at the door. Now, I do have to take one other check, because we've done this before. There you go, real brief. So we're looking for... Leaders to go and leaders to come in the last days. Daniel 2.21. Well, also we got to look at 1 Thessalonians, a very, very important scripture. Jesus talks to Paul and he says this, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brother, you, brothers, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Keep that day in mind, because you're going to hear this over and over again in different scriptures as well. But we know that the last days, Jesus instructed us and said, just like a woman with these birth pains. Bring that up there. The world is in birth pains right now. And they're getting worse. We see that happening. We don't, I mean, it's happening so fast, it's hard to even keep up with it, to report on it. And they're very, very major uh, events that are going on. So 
Look at Mark 13, 8. For nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. We're seeing the rising of kingdom against kingdom all over the place. E Egyptians, the Syrians, the Yemenis. I mean, it, the list goes on and on. About 15 to 17 Arab states in the Arab uprising. Killing each other, fighting each other, deposing kings, putting new kings up. Exactly what the Lord instructed us. But as you see in the blue here, look on the screen, it says the beginning of the birth pains, sorrows, if you want to say. They're coming, and they're coming harder. And when they come, they don't slow up. They get harder. They get faster until the baby is born. And so what am I saying here? What is the Lord saying? What is he showing us? The events, the world events that he prophesied are going to start to speed up, and they're going to deliver some of the prophecies that haven't been fulfilled, and then deliver the Messiah. And what are those prophecies? Psalm 83, and then I'm going to get into the second half where you're going to be talking about Ezekiel. Now Hebrews, not forsaken, Hebrews 10, 25, not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together as some, of them, some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see, again, here we go, that day approaching. What is he talking about? The day that is coming to remove the church. The Lord's second coming. The Lord is going to come. He's going to stay up in the clouds. He's going to blow the trumpet. We're going to leave. And then seven years later, you'll see it Revelation chapter 19, we come back riding with Jesus from heaven at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Now, not, notice it says, not forsaking the gathering of the saints. And I hear Christians Say, well, I don't like what the pastor's saying. I don't like how he's saying it. I don't like the music. It's too long. It's too short. It's too loud. I don't like the hymns. I don't like the band music. Many an excuses, and none of them are any good. Well, not to the Lord. <laughs> I mean, if you really love the Lord, you love the Lord. And if you call yourself a Christian, act like a Christian. You're not fooling the Lord. The Lord knows everything about you, 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 everybody in this audience tonight. He knows all of what you are and what's in the heart. So what comes out of the mouth? That's not important. It's what's in the heart that comes out. And the Lord knows who you are. So go, assemble yourselves, especially as you that see that day approaching, because we're going to need strength with from one another in these last days and especially those people who are left behind when they find out that they missed the mark and they're left behind in the churches in heaven they're going to need fellowship and this scripture is going to be very very important to them all right so every one of the nations now that i'm going to be covering very very specific nations these nations are in prophecy and they are in the process of being fulfilled of what the Bible has to say about them. So let me just show you about Daniel uh, chapter 2 verse 21 where he's going to depose uh, uh, leaders and kings or put them into place. Look at this. On the 15th of January 2011 you have Tunisia. The ex-president Ben Ali flees to Saudi Arabia. He was in position of power for 23 years and all of a sudden he's gone. You got Libya. Libya was a nation ruled, you'll see that, 42 years. Look at that, 42 years. Omar Gaddafi. And then all of a sudden, boom, they hang him out to dry, they kill him, run him through the streets. And he's gone. And now somebody worse than him is coming, Al-Qaeda. And, of course, it fits perfect. It gels together because they're moving not only to Psalm 83, but they're moving to Ezekiel, chapter 38, that war as well. And then you have Egypt. And you'll see us scroll down a little, little bit. The Mubarak was in reign there for 30 years. He had a peace agreement that Anwar Sadat made. It was holding since 1979, all the way up until the end of 2011. All of a sudden, boom, he's out jeopardizing the peace agreement, which you're going to see when I tell you uh, that peace agreement is out the window. He was there for 30 years. Now he's out. Somebody else coming in. And then February the 3rd of 2011, discontent in Yemen. There's another president ousted, and he was in there for three decades, 30 years. So what is the Lord trying to show you? What is he trying to show all of us? 
the last day's leaders are moving into position to fulfill the first prophecy that would be the Psalm 83 prophecy. Now, when I get into the Psalm 83, and I'm going to cover this again in case some of you leave and you don't come back for Ezekiel, this is very important. What is the function of the Israeli army, the IDF? What's their function? Well, in 1948, when they were a nation again, at 12 midnight, after they became a nation on March or uh, April 4th, March 14, 1948, 12 o'clock, they were uh, assaulted by the Arabs, uh, bordering them. The Israelis didn't even have an army. They had guns and guys coming together. Most of them couldn't even speak the language, and it was very difficult to form a cohesive army because they were talking different languages. There were immigrants coming over. But guess what? They won the war. How is that when these massive armies coming down, the Jews who can't even muster together and talk to each other, that shows you one thing right off the bat. Who's stronger? Allah or Jehovah, the God of the Jews? I mean, think about that, especially if you're Muslim. And I love the Muslims, and I pray for the Muslims. But think about this. If your God, Allah, is so strong, how is it that a nation the size of Connecticut, with hardly any training or hardly any arms, is able to defeat the massive army that came on them on the 15th of March in 1948? And then not only did it do it there, but it went again in 1967. Outnumbered again, five to one. Allah against the Jews, the God of Jehovah. They won again. You should be scratching your head. What's going on here? Think about this, please, if you're Muslim. Think about this. And then in 1973, when they attacked on Yom Kippur, that holiday, they took them by surprise. Outnumbered, I think it was seven to or ten to one. Again, this huge army. And now Israel is developing over these years, and now they're becoming a strong defense force and an air force as well. But think about it. If you're Muslim, Allah comes against a tiny nation, the size of New Jersey or Connecticut, whatever you want, small nation. And again, they win the war. I mean, who is the power? Who has the power? If Allah wants to wipe out the Jews, he could have done it three times already, and he hasn't done it. The, the purpose of the IDF, its establishment of 1948, was all the way up until the Psalm 83 war. They're defending their nation because, as you're going to see here, these people want to destroy Israel and wipe them off the map. So it is the, the function of the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, to protect their people, keep their nation together so no one defeats them. Now, if you'll notice, in Ezekiel War, the next one that will be taking place, Israel isn't going to fight that war. When you read the prophecies, God fights that war. He sanctifies his name, which I'm going to cover in detail. And then when you get into the book of Revelation, at the end, when everybody is coming against Israel to fulfill the completeness of Zechariah 12.3, where the whole world will come again, all the nations, it's Jesus Christ who fights for the Jews. It's not the IDF. Think about it, especially for Muslims. Jehovah God wins every single time. You're on the wrong side. And I don't say this in a, in a, uh, a disrespectful way to you. I'm just pointing out facts to you that you need to think about. If God, your Allah, cannot defeat these small group of people, ask yourself, why is that? It's because God, Jehovah, Jesus, Yoshia, he is the Messiah. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and He dwelt among men, and the men didn't know Him. Our Creator was living with us, walking with us. He is the Mighty. He is the Almighty, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and Omega. Think about it. So right now, let's go into Psalm 83, verses 1 through 5, and now I'm going to fill in 
the blanks for you as we go through here so that you understand exactly who's coming, what the Lord shows us, who it is that's coming. Keep not thy silence, O God, and hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thy enemies make a tumult. In other words, they're going to be making a lot of noise. And they that hate thee have lifted up their head. They're proud. We can do anything. We can destroy the Israelis. We got all on them. We can do anything. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. What people? Who is he talking about? Let's find out. You don't have to guess with this. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And they have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel, that's who he's talking about, may be no more in a re remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are a confederate against thee. So while you're dusting, or digesting that, let me just take a uh, look at that and make sure we're filming it right because I want this to go on YouTube so that everybody can see the connection here. So what does that tell us? You have a band of nations, and I'm going to show you exactly who they are, that God says they're going to come up with some crafty scheme and then they're going to go and try to wipe Israel out so she's not even around anymore. And we're seeing in this book, what I'm going to give you in the presentation, is only tip of the iceberg, the, the information that you're going to find in the book. All the different times they said, we're going to destroy you. These same people that are in the Psalm 83. Now look who's, in, who, look who's coming against Israel. On the left-hand side, from 1 to 10, as you see up there, you'll see the Old Testament names, and then on the right-hand side, you will see the New Testament, or the modern-day names, if you will, of those people that... the the Lord showed us is going to attack Israel. You have Edom, which are the Palestinians in southern Jordan. You have the Ishmaelites, which are the Saudis. Okay, Ishmael was the father of the Arabs. You have Moab, present-day Palestinians in southern Jordan. You have the uh, Hagarites, or the Hagarenes, the Egyptians. You're going to have a lot of information about that. And you have Jabal, which is today Hezbollah. Hezbollah, the northern Lebanese. Amman and the Palestinians in northern Jordan. You have Emelik and the Arabs in the Sinai. And just recently they've been moving tanks into the Sinai from Egypt. Philistina is the old name for the Palestinians Hamas in the Gaza Strip. In Tyre, today's Hezbollah, enemy, strong, bad enemies of Israel in South Lebanese, and they're fighting like crazy, throwing rockets and mortars, as you're going to see. And then you have Assyria, or today's the Syrians in North North Iraq. All right, so we don't have to guess who they are. The Lord told us specifically who they were. So what's going to happen here? Now, on let me, I'm going to cover every single one of these nations here. But what you need to know before, because we're going to start off here with Egypt, because Egypt's a major deal, because uh, they have fulfilled the beginning of this year. They fulfilled, I believe, Isaiah chapter 19, where Isaiah chapter 19 talks about the Egyptians coming against the Egyptians. And then they're going to be turned over to a cruel leader. That's in the process of going on right now. You don't think so? Let me show you something here. Let me play something that I put up, and this, this was a post that I put up on December 20th, and it talks a little bit about this, give my uh, voice a little bit of rest while you listen to what I said about Isaiah chapter 19. And uh, scroll down at my site so you can see the video. I'll forward this a little bit so you don't have to go through the writing. But please, while you're watching this, keep the words of the Lord in mind. The Egyptians will fight against the Egyptians, fighting against themselves. I mean, it's a woman. They're pounding. Now, look at this band. I want to stop her right there. At least that one soldier had enough decency, and I'm praying that with compassion like that, the Lord would use him. 
and save him. And he was the only one who had compassion. He covered her up. Most of those people, they look at those women over there as just vessels to use. But the bottom line is this. Egypt is in a process of fighting against themselves and now they got a new leader. And the Bible says that he's going to be given over to a cruel leader. And there's more about uh, Egypt. As you're going to see, lots of information about Egypt in here. So let me continue on. Now, in December also of the 20th of December, I put up at my post, and you'll see a site just like this, and for time constraints, it's in my post I warned that there was going to be this, because this is what I got, what call it a word of knowledge or whatever it is, this is what, I, what was laid on my heart by the Lord. The Muslim Brotherhood would win the election. This is even before they went into the election. And I'm going to show you some proof about this. So I was told Muslim Brotherhood would win the election. You will see the peace treaty fall apart and Islamic law being instituted. So this is coming from a nation that was really friends with Israel. And all of a sudden they're not any friends anymore. So when you get to my site and it's all there, I don't take anything down. You'll be able to click the link. You just Google my, uh, just go to Isaiah chapter 19, and I'll have some other links up there as well. But let me just read what I said to you back then. I'm quoting it. Frank's warning of June 13, 2011, concerning who would win Egypt's election and why. Most people watching the signs of the last days couldn't figure out how Egypt would come into play as one of the nations who are going uh, that are going to attack Israel. And I kept wondering myself, what is going to happen that will cause Egypt to break off their peace treaty with Israel? Because this is what was laid on my heart, which they both put in place in 1979. As of June 11th, we no longer have to guess because we have seen how the breakup has occurred and we see these tensions mounting between e Israel and Egypt. In July 2011, when I saw the riots against President Hussein Mubarak, I warned everybody at my site to watch for the Muslim Brotherhood to make moves to take power. And as a side note down here on December 20th, in that video that you're going to listen to, if you go to my site, I even say that they're lying. They said that they're not going to run a candidate, and I stopped it and I said, they are lying. That's what the Lord told me. That's what he laid on my heart. And then that has been fulfilled. And you'll see. And I'm going to quote from my May 13th. This is the news that came from the Daily News out of Egypt. And I'm going to quote it. A senior member of the Egyptian or Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood said that he would run for president as an independent. A move that could draw votes from backers from the Islamic group has that has said it will not field a candidate. So now they are. So that part of what was laid on my heart also came to pass. Now I'm really beginning to pay attention and really watching the news like I do every day anyway, but now I'm getting really excited. Secular group and West are concerned about how much power the Brotherhood may gain after the first election since toppling President Hassan Mubarak. And they should be concerned because the Bible says that they're going to fight against each other and then give over to a cruel leader so we know what is coming. It may even be him. And I believe that it is after you see some of this information. Now, from my warning, I'll say that June 18th, it came to pass. And it's not my warning. I'm just, I hear these things. I write them down. I leave them on my website for all people to see. Here's the headline, Muslim Brotherhood supporters celebrate Egypt's elect, election. Supporters of the Muslim Brotherhood celebrate entire square Cairo, the center of last year's revolution, after the party's presidential candidate, Mohamed Marsi, claimed victory in a runoff, 51.8%. So everything that I was told is taking place. And it's I believe that it's taking place, not because... I know anything other than, uh, or some other thing that you should know, because it's in the Bible, we know that Egypt is going to attack Israel, so put two to two together. And if the Lord wants to reveal something like that, 
I'll, I'll take it and use it to glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what about my December? When you go back into December of 2011, I sh about the Sharia law, the warning that Sharia law is coming. That's what they're going to install after Mubarak is out of the way. In Psalm 83, we see Egypt is one of the nations that will attack Israel. As I have warned you in the past, this is from the, my December 14th. So, in the in the past, I already warned you. Watch out what the Muslim Brotherhood does in the near future, because they will turn to strict Islamic law to control their people and anybody else that they can. So there is a an article that came out. I want you to, to see this. Let me see if it's on the. It may even be on this one, but okay. I don't have it there, and I apologize for that. But what I did is I have a link there. Let's see here. You hold on for one second. What I can do is this. Watch this. Thank God for the Internet. Thank you. Get rid of that. We'll come right to here if it should work pretty well. I want you to see this because it does, it is important. All right. It'll give me a chance for my, to take a, a breather here as well. It looks like our internet connection is pretty slow today. It could be because of the weather back there. I don't know the flooding that was taking place. In Luke 21, 25, as this thing is loading, the Lord told us about the roaring and the waves of the sea. And uh, you see this super storm that hit back east, causing a lot of havoc. But So it's causing havoc here, and it's not going to allow us to load. But in there, what I did is I actually put a quote for you so that you could see that quote. And uh, what it was is the Muslim Brotherhood, which won success in its first round of pol uh, parliamentary elections in Egypt last month, is reportedly set on turning the country's holiday resort sin-free. What do they want to do? And I'll just briefly tell you what the article is because I have the link there and you'll be able to get it when you watch the YouTube channel when I load it, load it the video. And essentially, it says that they're going to take the beaches and the resorts they're going to separate them, the women in one place and the sisters and the men in another place. So you have the women and the sisters and the men separated. No bikinis, no alcohol, and they're essentially going to what they call Hillel, strict Islamic law. And if you want to swim with a burqa and you can hardly see, then go and take a trip in Egypt. Because this is what they're trying to install, but this just shows us the pattern and the direction of this nation, and it's all leading to the enemies and the destruction of the nation of Israel. Now, here's another one, and of course, this is October the 15th of 2012. You should show it up there pretty well. October 15th, the Egyptian cleric, Allah said, ridiculous Christianity and vows to instate Islamic law in Egypt. So I'm pointing now, compounding, if you will, putting together step by step, building a big folder, circumstantial evidence that the Lord is providing for you so that you can see that everything that he is saying is coming to pass. Everything. And by the time that we give you all the circumstantial evidence, you as that jury you're going to have to decide and I know that it's it's the truth the Lord is our God and he is coming back so moving on what about the peace and safety I got to pull this in because we're talking about Egypt and all these other different nations destruction is coming while they're calling peace look at this first Thessalonians chapter 5 verse Three and four. For when they shall say peace and safety, sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in the darkness that that day should take you overtake you as a thief. So we have the call for peace and safety. 
right? You're going to see that without a doubt. And the very words, the very words to call for peace and safety are there all around us. A lot of people don't even know it, but we're hearing it on a regular basis. I'm going to play a video for you, and you'll see all of these world leaders saying the exact same thing that Paul was told by Jesus Christ. They're saying it now in our generation, the only generation who's seen all these things come to pass. Check this out. The objective is to have a Palestinian state on the borders of 1967 that will live in peace and security. The lesson of history is that peace and security do not come easily. Peace and stability are in fact people on all sides of the world. Two states for two peoples living side by side in peace and security is not a vague slogan, but a real necessary necessity for the stability in the entire region. Israel and Palestinians, they can live side by side in peace and security. This is our look, our vision, and this is our look, our treatment. So the new deal. Here's Akhmadinejad talking peace, but he wants to destroy Israel. My hopes and dreams for Israel are to live in peace, to live in peace and security. Two states living side by side in peace and security. True security for all Israelis. We will also pursue peace between Israel and Lebanon. In peace and security. Israel and Syria. Peace and security. And a broader peace between Israel and its many neighbors. Must decide whether we are serious about peace and security. To recognize Israel's legitimacy and its right to exist in peace and security. That's how we will find this pathway to peace and security. That is the work that we must do. In peace and security. Peace and security and, and coexistence. A movement towards peace. If we have this triangle, economy, security, and peace, then peace can succeed. So there you have it. You have the words. You have the very words that the Lord Jesus Christ told us to look for. Those very words are everywhere. Now here's another example. This one is from October the 22nd, 2012. Former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, Israeli-Palestinian peace is vanishing. Is vanishing. And here we are, Carter, who claims to be a Christian, is working against the Israelis, saying that it's the Israelis' fault. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, anyone who blesses Israel will be blessed. Anybody who doesn't will be cursed. In Joel chapter 3, verse 2, it talks about anybody who tries to divide up God's land are going to be destroyed. And in Zechariah 12, 3, or verse 2 and 3, it talks about Anyone who burdens themselves over Jerusalem, or for that matter, for the Israelis, they're going to be cut into pieces. And it says all of the people of the world would be coming against it in the end days. And you can see the isolation that's going on towards Israel right now. Check this out. It says, Carter, a longtime cr critic of the Israeli policies, called the current situation catastrophic and blamed Israel for growing isolation of the East Jerusalem from the West Bank. And he said a Palestinian state has become unviable. And so the peace process is breaking down. Uh, breaking down. Now get this, okay? This is another quote from that article. We've reached a crisis stage. Remember the birth pangs? How many times am I going to have to tell you? Because it's showing up everywhere. A crisis stage, Carter 88. A two-state solution is the only realistic path to what? Peace and safety or security. The same thing that the Lord told us to look for. As President Carter, or as President Carter broke, uh, brokered a historic peace treaty between Israel and Egypt, but since he left office, he's become an increasing critical of Israel. His 2006 book, Palestinian Peace, Not Par Apartheid, claimed that Israel's settlements has become increasingly critical, or uh, excuse me, I skipped the line here. Israel's settlement of the Palestinian land was a primary obstacle to the Mideast peace. The book uh, sparked widespread outrage in Israel, and obviously it did. 
And so Jimmy Carter has fallen under the curse. He has taken sides against the Jews. And that's not a very good position to be in. Now, either he doesn't know the scripture or he knows it and he doesn't care. I don't know which it is, but as it stands right now, I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. So let's go on and we'll see. Here's Marcy here. This is the new Egyptian president. And what, what this article talks about, this is, there was a cleric who was praying. And what he was saying was the destruction of Jerusalem, the destruction of Israel. And the, the cleric or the, the prime minister, the new head of Egypt, every time he said destroy Israel, he would go amen. And I'm going to show you a little bit of evidence. This article came out on the October the, the 19th. And then there was another one that came out about this on October the 26th. Israel rattled by the rise of anti-Semitic rhetoric from Egypt. Get this. It says the new tone coming out of Egypt punctuated by the president Mohammed Marsi mal mouthing a men to an IM's call for the destruction of Israel is rattling uh, rattling residents of the Jewish state who claim the Obama administration isn't uh, taking the ratched up rhetoric seriously. The lip reading by the Anti-Defamation League and the Middle East Media Research Institute confirms Marcy's approval of a prayer delivered by in an influential Ayman in which he stated, O oh Allah, grant us victory over the infidels. O oh Allah, destroy the Jews and their supporters. And then down here it says, the rise to power this summer of Marcy Mother Mother or Muslim Brotherhood prompted fears that the anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic party would uh, set a collision course with its near neighbor. And the collision course would be Psalm 83, jeopardizing the peace treaty. And we're seeing that already, which he held, it held firm between the previous weary nations since 1979. So moving down, here we go. Israel now, guess what? Israel is Egypt's number one enemy. The parliament got together, and this is what they said, the new installation of this government. Are you seeing it converging down the road to fulfill the psalm? Check this out. This is going to be another video talking about that very same thing. This is a news clip. There you go. The newly elected Islamist-dominated Egyptian parliament has voted to support a measure to halt natural gas exports to Israel and to expel Israel's ambassador in Cairo. The motion is mainly symbolic because currently only the ruling military council can make such important decisions. A parliamentary committee report described Israel as Egypt's number one enemy and declared that Egypt will never be a friend, partner or ally of Israel. Tension between the two countries has been rife since the overthrow of Hosni Mubarak in February 2011. Israel's ambassador to Egypt last September had to be evacuated when the Israeli embassy was stormed by crowds. And the Egyptian pipeline supplying gas to Israel has also been blown up over a dozen times in little more than a year. Many of Mubarak's generals are currently members of the ruling military council. The Muslim Brotherhood, which controls just under half of the seats in the new legislature, supports the election of a president with an Islamist background. So there you have it. I mean, it is, it's there. It, it's in front of us. You can't escape it. You can't escape it. The words of our Messiah are coming to pass. They're coming true. There's another one. This came out on October the 21st, 2012. Egyptians, we want nuclear bombs and to break treaty with Israel. Most Egyptians want their, their country and Iran to have nuclear weapons, and they also favor renewing ties with Tehran and breaking off relations with Israel. Just put together Psalm 83, Egypt is going to attack with the rest of them in this crafty council. They're going to attack. And then now they want to break off relations. Can you finally see what I'm seeing and the rest of the people see who believe the Lord's words, 
I'm praying that you will definitely see that. I hope so. Now, the respondents also clearly oppose Cairo, which I'm quoting, Cairo's re uh, retaining diplomatic ties with Israel, with 74% wanting to break nearly three times as many as in a, a 2009 poll when the uh, Egyptian President Hussam Mubarak was in office. 77% percent agreed that the peace treaty with Israel is no longer useful and should be dissolved. It bring every when I wrote that when when I read this because I'm quoting that article, when I read this it brought me right back to December. When when I saw that I think it Lord we you're coming quickly. You're going to be coming for us. There's no no doubt about that. So we got the call for peace and safety. You saw that. I I based my facts on what you saw based them on what we're hearing almost on a weekly basis now. And so the sudden destruction is coming. That's the part that hasn't been fulfilled yet. The birth pangs are leading up to that, though. Look at this. Here's another one. October the 27th of 2012, the, the Israeli Knesset speaker to declare Oslo Accord dead. Since the signing of the Oslo Accord in September of 1993 between the Palestine Liberation Organization in Israel, negotiators from both sides have been trying to achieve a lasting peace agreement based on a two states or two people solution. The Palestinians want their future state on the land Israel occupied in the 1967 war with East Jerusalem as their capital. Again, going back to Zechariah 12, uh, 2 and 3. Jerusalem, the burden of stone. Here it is. Here's the proof. Let's add this to the proof that I'm piling up for you. So, Israel rejects a binational state. I'm right here if you, you're reading it with me. Uh, uh, binational state for fear it would lose its Jewish character. No doubt that it would. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu repeatedly said that there is no basis to discuss the borders of the Palestinian state without the Palestinian leadership recognizing Israel as a Jewish state. You cannot talk peace with somebody who's throwing rockets and missiles and trying to kill you, strapping on bombs and blowing people up. In 2006, Benjamin Netanyahu took in 7,000 rockets before he sent what they call the lead cast operation in the Gaza to stop them. You can't deal with people who are trying to kill you. They are not going to give up their charter. The Palestinians have a charter that says to wipe Israel off. The map. Get rid of them. So here's another one. Cairo demands Israel to halt settlement construction. And, of course, there's a lot of problems which is going, going on in Israel because they're building homes in East Jerusalem that the Palestinians want them to stop because they perceive this as their land and they're getting the world to come on their side. And so when the Palestinians attack and Israel responds, guess what? The majority of the media says it's Israel's fault. It's Israel who, who's the aggressors. And of course, Israel's just responding to being attacked. So moving on, here's another one. And this, please watch this because this, when I saw this, I, I just knew there is no, no doubt in my mind that we are very, very close. What you're seeing here is Egypt, entire square, and they're chanting to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem, to destroy Israel, to destroy the Jews. Two million of these people, and this is just one nation. And when that attack comes in the Psalm 83, and the IDF moves in, they're going to do their role. They're going to take them out quickly. It won't be a long-lasting war. Israel can't afford it. They're going to have to move in swiftly and take care of the problem. And when they do that, the world is going to be amazed at the power of the as little is, is, uh, Israeli army. So let's take a look at this. This just this blew me away. It'll give you a bigger screen here, hopefully. I'm 
I'm sorry about this. We're having a little problem with our uh, Oh, there we go. Well, we lost the sound, but let's see if we can get it back here. Well, for whatever reason, they're chanting. We can't hear it. I think that Satan doesn't want them, you to hear what they're saying. But when you go to my website and you look on this video, and you see this video, it will blow you away because they're chanting over and over again to Jerusalem, to Israel, to wipe them out. Two million of them. So let's go back to the website. And that, that'll be right there. You can, I'll stop it so that if you watch this at the YouTube when I post it, after I leave, then you'll be able to hear it, hopefully, if there's nothing wrong with their site there. So here is another article that came out on the 27th of October. Calls to free. The Allah Osk sounded in, uh, the, in, in Egypt. It says the Egyptian jurists and the politicians have issued calls to liberate the Allah Osk mosque on the Temple Mount and to restore Egypt's leading role in the Arab world. Participants in a news conference in Cairo on October the 25th said that the liberation of the Jerusalem by Muslims will be accomplished within, without a doubt, without a doubt, by the present generation which brought about the change of the Arab regimes and that the peace treaty with Israel was just an act of deception that led to the loss of the homeland. And so what they're saying here, get this now, this present generation. You see this right here? The present generation. Without a doubt, by the present generation. And they got that right. And do you know why they got that right? Because in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus told us that this generation would not pass till all of these things take place. And this is part of what that is encompassing in that generation. So they're right on there. Now what is bad for these people is it's going to be reversed because what they're speaking is going to come back on them and Egypt will be defeated in the Psalm 83 war. Now here's another one from October the 20th. One of the leaders from the, the uh, Egyptians, the uh, the new government, and he's talking, I'm just going to give it a headline. The uh, new FJP leader in Egypt calls for Sharia law. Sharia law, the bottom line is if you have Sharia law, you and it's instituted in that nation, they have to try to kill off Israel. They got to. They're infidels. They got to get rid of them. And, and they got to reclaim Jerusalem. That's why there were two million of those people chanting to Jerusalem. I will read the red. It says this. Last week, Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood spiritual leader Mohammed Badi calls on Muslims worldwide to liberate Jerusalem by means of jihad. You know what a jihad is? War. They want to attack them. Again, we're pounding, compounding the circumstantial evidence, making a case. And then again in the red. The Brotherhood's Supreme Guide previously vowed that if the Muslim Brotherhood ever rose to power in Egypt, it would work to sever relations with Israel. And that, my friends, is exactly what is happening now exactly what is happening now and there it's not a coincidence not a coincidence now let's look at Syria who was another one of those nations in the beginning of 2012 the Lord also laid on my heart what was going to happen in Syria and to the leaders and uh, this is essentially where wrote, Syria's leader was going to say when uh, when the first riots against Syria Assad broke out, this is what happened. As soon as I saw what was going on, this is what was laid on my heart. What the Lord showed me was 
was like a cornered animal, Assad will threaten to attack Israel. And then there was more to it, and I'm going to cover that. As events unfolded in Syria this year, what the Lord laid on my heart actually came to pass, as you will see. So we have on August the 23rd of 2012, the headline came up here, and this blew my mind when I saw this. I was really blown away by it. Cornered and desperate, will Assad unleash a catastrophic chemical weapons attack against Israel? Question mark. Now, this is what I was showing, and then this shows up, and I'm thinking, oh, man, Lord, you know, why didn't you give it to everybody? Why do I, why am I focusing? I mean, why are you doing, because he know that I would take the message out. I'm not afraid to preach the, the real news about what's happening, the good news. The good news is the Lord wants to save you all from what's coming, and he can do that if you allow him. But get this, let me center in on this. For experienced observers believe that President Assad may be plotting a surprise attack against Israel in a desperate attempt to dis, uh, distract attention away from his internal troubles and to transform himself into a hero across the Arab world. And this could be a, a scenario that will start, it could start, the Psalm 83 war, because if they came against Israel, Israel would pounce on them. And you're going to see that now we converge with other prophecies as well. But let me continue here, because when I saw this, I said, there's no doubt that this, this what I was told, came from the Lord. Go look, look at this headline here. Assad, Syria will shower Tel Aviv with rockets if attacked by foreign powers. I was writing about this constantly on my website. Over and over again, Google me, you'll see it. The warning came to pass. Iranian news agency quotes remarks made by the Syrian president during August meeting with the Turkish MVM Assad. It will take Damascus six hours to mobilize against Israel. And Damascus is looking like a ruin in its heap right now. They're in the civil war and they're going closer and closer to eat to Assad's stronghold in Damascus. And it looks like he's being cornered. And if he gets cornered, he's going to come out swinging. And we could see the Psalm 83. We could wake up tomorrow morning and see just like we did in the Yom Kippur war where the war started. Got to be on the watch, keep looking what's going on. Syria has allies with Iran who was in the Ezekiel War. And you'll see one of these older articles, Syria will defend Iran if Israel attacks. Compounding this evidence over and over again to prove what the Lord says. Now, if, if Syria, Bashar al-Assad comes down, guess what? Look at this, Isaiah 17.1. Behold, Damascus will cease from being a city, and in a ruinous heap, it's going to be destroyed. Jeremiah also talks about this in Jeremiah chapter 49, verses 24 through 27. Take a look. Damascus has become feeble. She has turned to flee, and panic has gripped her. Anguish and pain has seized her, pain like that of a woman in labor. Remember, again, this is the third time we see another scripture about in labor. We're in those labor pains. We see Damascus. We see how they're encroaching on the corner dog, Assad. What else do you need? How much proof do you need before you say, Lord, um, forgive me. Forgive me. Have mercy on my soul. And it goes on, surely her young men will fall in the streets. All her soldiers will be silenced in that day. Remember I told you? You're going to hear a little more about that day. There's certain days that this is going to happen. It's going coming. It's coming quick. Coming quick. Just like the birth pangs. Now get this. Here's the headline. This, I mean, if you can't see this, listen to this. Syria warns, next war will be ruinous. Isaiah 17.1 tells us that Damascus will be left in a ruinous heap. You've got to watch what you're saying. Especially when you're directing it to God's people, the chosen Israel. Israel's not going anywhere. They're not going to be destroyed in the Psalm 83 war or the Ezekiel war. Syria's in for big problems. They're under the curse and they're going to be felt the blow. 
Soon. Very soon. Syria's foreign minister warned Israel early this month that any new war would re that would reach Israel's cities to which foreign minister Avador Lieberman responded that the Syrian army would be defeated and its regime would collapse in any future conflict. And that is the truth because we know that from scripture. Syria is going to be in deep trouble. Now, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to stop right here and take a, a short break. We're going to come back and we're going to pick up with Hamas, another one of those nations that are in the Psalm 83 war. So feel free to get up, get some water. You might even want to walk, you know, wipe the sweat off your brows because it's getting pretty hot in here uh, with the Holy Spirit showing you that it, it's time to light the candle, you know. And I feel maybe some of those candles that were flickering are now starting to get brighter because you're starting to see what the Holy Spirit is showing you. And the light of the Lord Jesus Christ is bubbling up the water that's never going to run dry in you based on the Holy Spirit in you. It's going to be gushing out of you if you receive the Lord and you do what He wants. And He wants you to love Him because He loved you first. That's what the Bible said. That's why He went to the cross. So let's take a break. And we will be back. Thanks. <laughs> 